I'd read only one of the vampire novels for which uh, Anne Rice had become famous, so I can't really say I was, I was a fan. But I was very intrigued when I read a few years ago that she had abandoned her atheism and had re-embraced the very robust uh, Catholicism of her youth. And so I turned with great interest to the novels that Anne Rice subsequently wrote about Jesus. And they really are extraordinary novels. She tries to tell the story of Jesus, but from the first-person perspective. She gets inside the subjectivity of Jesus as a young child and as a young adult. And that's a pretty tricky uh, move to try to get inside the psyche of the one who's at the same time divine and human. And though I'd say a few times my theologian's mind quarrel with the way she did it, in general I thought it was handled with a great deal of uh, you know, orthodoxy and, and skill. So I very much admired those books. And then uh, I think it was last year on my vacation I took with me um, her spiritual memoir called um, Called Out of Darkness, the story of, of this transition from her very intense New Orleans Catholicism of her youth to her middle years as, a, as a, an atheist and then her reversion to the faith. And I found that book uh, very compelling and beautiful. So after reading her novels on Jesus and the memoir, I could you know, describe myself accurately as an Anne Rice fan. Um, and that's why it was with a fair amount of, of dismay that I read just recently that she is uh, continuing as a disciple of Christ, but is withdrawing from the church. She said, I'm, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, but I just can't stand the company of, of Christians. And her complaint, mostly it seems to me about Catholic Christians, is that uh, the church is, is anti-gay, it's anti-woman, it's, um, it's oppressive in different ways, and that she just can't handle the association with the church anymore, though she continues as a, uh, as a follower of Jesus. Now, here's why it struck me with such dismay, uh, not just because she's a, a prominent writer and I think she's a great uh, you know, advocate for the church, but what she's proposing is, from a strictly theological standpoint, not so much wrong as impossible. Here's what I mean. You can coherently withdraw from the Mahatma Gandhi society and still remain an admirer of Gandhi. You could withdraw from the Churchill Society, because you don't like the members of the Churchill Society. You don't like its bylaws or whatever. And still remain a great admirer of Churchill. That's because those would be voluntary organizations. You join them when you want, you step out of them when you want. But the church, at least in the Catholic understanding, the church is not a voluntary society. It's rather a mystical body. Now, go right back to the scripture. It's Paul that gave us that great image, that master metaphor of the church as a body. Christ is the head. We who make up the church are the members. But go even deeper. Go back to Jesus himself. I am the vine. You are the branches. Remain in me. If you don't remain in me, there's no life in you. He says, eat my body and drink my blood. I mean, you might admire Churchill all you want, but no one's going to eat the body and drink the blood of Churchill. We're not in that kind of organic relationship to him. But the church is not an organization primarily. It is an organism. It's a living body. Remember the great scene in the Acts of the Apostles when um, Jesus addresses Saul. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now Saul's going off to persecute the church out in Damascus, the followers of, of the Lord. He doesn't say, Saul, why are you persecuting my church? He says, why are you persecuting me? That's the intimate connection between the head and the members of his mystical body. So you can't just say, from a Catholic perspective, I'm with Christ, but I've had it with the church. It's like saying, well, I like you, but I, I, just, don't, I just don't want to be around your body. <laughs> You know me precisely through my voice and my face and my body. That's what bears my personal presence to you. Otherwise, you're dealing not with the reality, but with an abstraction. And think about this. I go back to Anne Rice's book, uh, on, or her memoir, The Called Out of Darkness. How did she come into the church? Well, it was through that densely textured New Orleans Catholicism of her youth, with its art and its music and its liturgy, and it's intensely spiritual personalities. But then her reversion to the church happened, interestingly enough, through the liturgy she saw broadcast on EWTN. It happened through a very rich experience at that great statue of Christ in Rio de Janeiro. It happened through contact with a lot of very intense spiritual people 
that she met in the church. The point is she got Christ precisely through the densely textured world of the church. The church is, despite its flaws, despite its limitations, up and down the centuries, the privileged vehicle by which Christ comes into the world. Now, I fully know that church people, even of the highest rank, say and do stupid things. I'm well aware of this terrible scandal that's affected the church in so many ways, the sex abuse scandal, and I'd be willing to bet I'm angrier than Anne Rice is about it. Not only because it's harmed so many people directly, but because it undermines the work of the church, undermines my work in almost every way. I'm aware, painfully aware, of those limitations in the church. Here's my fear, that Anne Rice is moving toward a kind of abstract Jesus. John tells us the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The church, with all of its flaws, with all of its problems, continues to be this flesh through which Christ becomes available to the world. That's why I would say, finally to Anne Rice, I don't think you really can do what you're proposing. I don't think you can simply leave the church as though you're leaving a voluntary organization. And finally, I'd say, come back, come home, because we need you.